A complete exercise, part one. In this lesson, to strengthen our understanding of the income statement and the balance sheet, we shall post the first 10 transactions of a firm, and we shall study the ongoing impact on the income statement and on the balance sheet, without going through all the formal posting to the trial balance, to the adjustments, etc. We shall use the following journal. Here are the 10 transactions. The first one will be cash put into the firm by the owners. It will be 100,000 euros, and they will receive 100 shares, each with face value 1,000 euros. Then we shall purchase some goods. We shall sell half of our stock. We shall pay the supplier. We shall acquire some equipment. We will sell the remainder of our stock on credit. We shall purchase some more goods, more goods again. We shall sell some of our stock. Here, in transaction 9, there will be the problem of valuation of our stock. And finally, we shall pay some salaries. You remember that uh, an income statement is prepared over a period of time, T1 up to T2. And we shall always look at the income statement from the beginning of the firm until right after each transaction. And a balance sheet can be prepared at any date, T, any date. It's a snapshot. We shall look at the balance sheet after each transaction. So we begin with the founding capital. Uh, the owners receive 100 shares, each worth 1,000 euros for having put altogether in the firm 100,000 euros. There is no meaningful IS yet, no IS, whereas the balance sheet after this transaction is very simple. In the assets, we have 100,000 euros, let's put a K for 1,000, and in the liabilities, we have 100 euros in capital and here it is in cash then we purchase 500 items at 60 euros a piece each that is on credit from mary there again there is no meaningful is yet and concerning the bs here is the evolution now on the asset side asset side we have still the uh, 100,000 euros of cash let's forget about the k and we have now in stock stock worth 30,000 euros and on the liability side the capital of course doesn't change so the capital is 100,000 euros, capital, and we owe Mary, she's a supplier, we owe her 30,000 euros of uh, worth of uh, goods. Next, we sell half of our stock for cash, and we sell, that is, 250 items, each of them at 200 euros. That is a sale of 50,000 euros. Now there is an IS income statement. Let's uh, sketch it. Debit credit sales 50,000 euros, always on the credit side. Opening stocks, nothing. Uh, that's the beginning of the firm. Purchases, well, we purchased for 30,000 euros of goods from Mary, but whether we paid it cash or on credit doesn't make any difference in the IS. Closing stocks, that's very important. Well, that's 15,000 euros since we sell only half of our stock. And we have a gross margin, therefore, of 30, 35,000. And since we have no uh, charges yet, we have a PL of the same figure, 35,000. On the BS side, well, here is the way it looks. We have an asset side, of course, and a liability side. Assets, liability. On the asset side, 
The stock now is no longer 30, it's only 15. That's stock, 15,000 euros. And in cash, we have, well, the cash, the initial cash, as well as the 50,000 we just received from our sales. That's cash. And on the liability side, we have the, uh, first of all, the capital that will not move, capital. We have what we owe Mary, which is 30. And we have this PNL here, 35. That's the PNL of the uh, firm after the first three transactions. That's how uh, all this is balanced. The total is here is 165, and here it's 165. And what is important in this operation is that we created value. We created this value here, which is value uh, that is also here. This is value belonging to the owners. So the net worth or the part of the owner is all this here. And this is external liabilities. Then we pay Mary. So in the IS, no change. And in the BS, well, the BS does change. We had 115 cash. Now we only have 120. 120 in cash. And the stock doesn't move, 15,000. And on the liability side, well, we no longer have external liabilities. So we have the uh, capital. 100 capital and we have the PNL uh, that is uh, from the past operations that's the liability side transaction number five acquisition of equipment there again uh, IS no change BS well here is the asset side we buy for 50,000 worth of equipment, that will be fixed assets, cash. We had 120,000 euros in a cash. So now we have only 70 cash. The stock doesn't change, 15. And now we have in fixed assets, call it equipment. Well, what we just purchased or acquired. That's the asset side of the balance sheet. So what happened is very simple. This 120 uh, became 70 and 50 went up. And on the, li on the liability side of the balance sheet, no change. Transaction number six, we sell that is a sale of the remainder of the stock and we sell that for 40,000 euros uh, mind you it's not exactly the same selling price as before well uh, we the first sale was at uh, uh, 200 euros a piece and this sale is only at 160 uh, 160 euros each that's 250 items multiplied by 160 uh, euros per item. Our selling price is not always the same. Well, here the IS debit credit sales. Now it is 90, that's 50 plus the new sale 40. Opening stocks, nothing. Purchases, same as before, 30. Closing stocks now zero. We have a gross margin, therefore, of 60. We haven't yet recorded any other charge, so the PNL, the profit and loss, is 60. Well, I'm running out of time. Uh, the balance sheet, assets and liabilities. On the asset side, the fixed assets, 50. The stock now is zero. Uh, we have an IOU from Steve, 40, and the cash, 
is still what it was because we didn't receive any cash. And on the liability side, we have the capital 100 and we owe now Mary. Uh, no, it's, we don't owe Mary anything, but we have a PNL, which is this figure, PNL 60. Well, I will finish up this lesson in the next, uh, the next lesson.